Okay, hello again, everyone. Uh, thanks for rejoining us here on the uh, first session of today. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand straight over to Ankan. So Ankan, the stage is all yours. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the people joining the broadcast today and appreciate for joining the session and hearing me talk about the RFID software tools. Again, my name is Ankan Basak. I am a product manager in Zebra and I manage all the RFID software tools that help with the deployment, configuration, management, and um, you know, uh, controlling and the configuration of, of the resource readers. So um, I will go ahead and start the presentation. Hopefully everyone can see see the screen. Yep, looks good, Ankan. All right, so uh, a brief agenda uh, of what I will be covering today in my presentation. Um, I will start off uh, with a broad overview of our product portfolio with all the hardware that we release to the market and all the software that goes around it. Second would be the overview of the tools that help with the deployment and the management and the configuration of these products. We'll give you a broad overview of um, the website with the support page within Zebra where you can find those tools. And thirdly, uh, I will have a slide with all the links that I will share today. So you can have a quick access to those links by clicking through it. And lastly, I'm gonna touch upon uh, this new concept that we are working on, which is IoT connector for RFID. Um, which I will briefly summarize the values and benefits of using IoT Connector, give you a very quick glimpse of it, and then you will have a session uh, later that will go into the details of how IoT Connector can be used uh, in terms of uh, passive fixed RFID. All right, so Zebra offers the, the largest portfolio of products of RFID products, um, both passive and active RFID products. So as you can see here, uh, we have d products in every category. We have products in the fixed reader space with antennas. In, that includes the FX 9600, 7500, ATR 7000, the snap readers with, that are used in the smart lens retail application and different kinds of antennas that could be used for different use cases. We also have a lot of handheld RFID products uh, that uh, including the MC3300 XR, the built-in, which are the built-in integrated RFID Android uh, handhelds. We also just released an RFD40 handheld RFID product with the standard as well as the premium, premium plus version. We also have RFD8500 and DS9908R. Among the printers, we have a lot of different fixed and portable printers, RFID printers, and different models of that. We also have different inlays and labels. And all these products run on our core ASIC platform. We also have a bunch of products in the active space including the beacons and the tags that are used in different verticals and segments. We also have hardware receivers that collects all the sensor information and passes, passes it over the infrastructure. And we also have different apps and utilities that helps configure these kind of devices. All those products are what strengthens our, our offer to the market, all these uh, products are also supported by our software tools, which I uh, manage. And then, and some of these are actually listed here at the top. So we have Zebra MotionWorks Enterprise, that is more of a platform that helps with the management, deployment, and configuration of these different uh, passive RFID readers. We have also a Smart Lens application, FX Connect, Network Connect, and One Two Three RFID. We will touch upon some of these in the overview of the tools. All right, so I'll go ahead and actually share you 
some of the tools. I'll go to our support site for RFID. This is the page where you will find all the support for all of our RFID products, including hardware support and, and tool support. How to get to it from the top, if you go to support and downloads, under product support, you can click RFID support and you will land on this page. Just a quick overview of how this page is structured so it would help you in finding the things you really need. It's really broken down by hardware first. So you have the same products I covered in the last slide. You have the fixed readers. Underneath the fixed readers, you have support sites, support pages for the 7500 and 9600, the handheld readers, the new integrated RFID portals that we just launched, the array reader for RTLS applications, the antennas, smart lens. So all these are the hardware products. And then underneath RFID software, these are all, all the software products that we support. Again, this is really broken down into utilities. So under utilities, uh, these are the tools. And then we have the developer tools um, that I will go into a little bit more detail. So there are two ways really to find the tools that you need for a particular application or for a particular type of product you are uh, deploying. So let's say you are working with a fixed uh, uh, reader such as the FX9600. You can click here from the FX9600 link that will take you to the FX9600 support page. Within that, if you are interested in upgrading the firmware on the FX9600, that is in the operating system. So if you click that, that will take you to the, to the page where it lists all the BSPs that you can just download. The latest is this version. Then you have the utilities. So if you are conf if you are interested in configuring the FX9600 or you want to do a quick demo, we have one to RFID desktop support and then the developer tools specific to FX9600, right? And then also we got manuals. So we have some PDFs and we also have um, help documentation within the tools as well. So this is one way of getting to tools from the F from the hardware support site. The other way, if you know exactly the SDK that you want to use, for example, you want to use an Android SDK for an RFD40 application, you can go under the developer tools, under RFID reader SDK, and click for Android. And that will take you to the Android RFID handheld SDK page, where we list all the supported products, the versions that are out there today that are released, release notes, and the actual SDK for download. We also have a, some of these SDKs. We have a developer guide, but we as an organization, we are moving to more HTML-based, dynamically generated help documentation that are all housed within our tech docs page. So more info, I highly encourage you guys to find more info through that link. So we have that link embedded in the support page. That's, this is the tech docs link. So you can just click that. It will actually take you to the tech docs page for Android RFID SDK, where you will find more information about the SDK, the supported device, features that are released as part of the version then you have different sections explaining how to start with a Android Studio project with RFID SDK, building a Hello, Hello World app. You also have the tutorial section where it actually goes into the, the specific functions and capabilities of the Android SDK for different kinds of products. And we also have some best practices guides. And lastly, this is the API documentation for the full API support within the Android SDK. So that's just an example of how we uh, 
document our Android SDK. And similarly, you can find uh, documentation for other SDKs as well. I'll jump out of this and I'll go through quickly some of these products, software products that are listed here as an overview. First thing within the utilities, we have one to three RFID desktop. We have released this, I believe it's for about four years now. This is the configuration and demo tool for FX 9600, 7500, ATR 7000, just basic configuration. You, this is a Windows app. You install it from the support page, from this page. So this is, if you click here, this is the latest version released on June 2022 has the release notes and this is the download and install, you can install it and then connect to your readers. And then you can do configuration of those readers. You can do former update of those readers and you can do a quick demo of tag reads with this tool. It's a very simple tool, gets you up and going fast with your RFID testing and piloting for a small set of readers in a local deployment scenario. There are a bunch of videos that explains how to use some of these capabilities. This is a quick video on how to do an inventory audit using asset tag list. This is one of the video. Then we have how to connect your reader from one to three RFID. I'm not gonna go through that because this is gonna take a few minutes. What I will do is probably give you a quick one minute tour and you will see this. And Ken, we're not hearing your audio, so I'm not sure if there was something that you wanted to speak through here. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I, I do not. Let me let me try the system audio. Uh, computer audio. Is there a setting here that maybe turn off, turn on the system audio? Let me see. probably struggling with that um anyway i i the, i was just wanted to um show the play the video but because of the the difficulties i'll probably let it go but these videos are available for you um on this i want to charify the support page on the want to charify the desktop support page so you guys can play that and give a quick get a quick tour of what the tool does um and apologies for that um so this is the this is the version the latest version for download we also have the the reader firmware that you that you can use to um 
update your readers. So we have different reader support within one to three RFID desktop. So we have FX 96, 7500 that you could update firmware with, with this tool. You also could update the RFD 40 and 90. The, those are the next gener those are the new uh, sleds that we just uh, released to the market. You could use uh, one to three RFID desktop to update the firmware on those devices as well as well as the ATR 7000, you could update firmware through this tool. It's a very powerful tool. Um, again, just for, for quick configuration, demo, um, firmware update for, for a set of devices that you have that you have um, developing on, it's, it's a very nice tool and I would really encourage you guys to try that out. So that's one to try RFID desktop. We have a similar tool for handheld, which is one to try RFID mobile. This is again an Android tool, and we also have an iOS version as well. Uh, the, the, the Android tool is available on Google Play, and the iOS version is also available in the App Store. These are specifically for our handheld products to configure demo uh, these handhelds. So it's it, the, the devices supported are the 8500, RFD2000, MC3300R, and the RFD40 and 90. Again, the latest version is available here, but you can also get it from the Google Play Store. There is a mobile application user guide. We have created a PDF, which is HTML, which is actually not an HTML. This is still a PDF, but this will be an HTML version in the near future. And this will actually take you through different features and functionalities of one to two RFID mobile. So that's one to three RFID desktop and one to three RFID mobile. Again, you will hear more details about these tools in the in, in the later sessions. So I won't go through more details. Uh, the other one is the class software. This is primarily used with ATR 7000 for RTLS type of applications. FX Connect, that's just a quick, easy configuration deployment tool to send data from readers to your applications. Rapid Read and Zeddy are really a lot of, a, I would say, prim very primitive tools. We still support them. Those are all the utilities. Then under developer tools, we have three different kinds of tool, developer tools. We have uh, an SDK for running, for developing and running embedded apps on fixed readers, FX9600 and 7500. So we have a C-based embedded SDK. We have a Java and Lin Java for a Linux-based SDK, uh, Java for Windows PC-based SDK, and C and Java uh, for the host SDK. We also have um, the host SDKs. That's There they are different programming languages you support for that. We have a C, C and Java, the Java for the Windows and the .NET for Windows. So these are, are the SDKs that you would use to build your host side of applications. While the other ones you would use to build an application to run on the reader. We also have SDK to, to, conf to for our handheld products, the MC33, RFD2000, 8500 and the RFD 40 and the 90. So we have uh, an Android SDK, as I just showed you, showed you previously. We have an iOS SDK. We have a Windows SDK. And also we have a Xamarin SDK. Uh, today we have uh, the Xamarin on the native Android. And we also have the Xamarin for iOS and that's a, a, a wrapper version. All right, uh, that is really a quick uh, overview of, of the tools and how these are kind of laid out in the support page. Again, these links will be there on, our, on my PowerPoint slide. So I'll go back to the PowerPoint. Some of the helpful links, again, I there is a product page for this. It's more of a customer facing product page to really get an idea of what the tools are that Zebra offers. 
Then the support page, which I just went through. Um, again, there is another link for this support page. If you click this link, this is actually gonna take you, let me just do that one more time. That is that is this, that is that link, and then we also have. I believe this is a different one. Yep, this is a this is another um, link that actually just focuses on the software tools. So again, this is kind of a similar kind of hierarchy. You have utilities, and then you have developer tools. So same same kind of organization here, but this page is primarily for software support, while the other one is for all. RFID related support. And then the tech talks page I just mentioned. So all the SDKs have links to this on the on, from their support page. But this is the, the the top level for the tech talks within RFID. So as you can see here, we have documentation covering RFID SDK for Android, Xamarin wrapper for RFID SDK for Android, for the iOS. So these are all separate documentation links from this page. So you can click into each of them. So if you're an iOS application developer and you want to know more about the iOS SDK, you can go here and learn about uh, how to uh, use how to use an iOS application with our handle devices. All right. Let me see here. So that's pretty much covers kind of an overview of, of our software products. Um, what I wanted to next talk about is the new feature that we are launching soon. It's called IoT Connector for RFID. This is an alternate way of programming and interfacing with our FX readers. This is a built-in feature inside the reader firmware and it is a, a modern web-friendly way of programming and interfacing with our readers. It is le really leveraging high-level protocols like MQTT, REST API, all built in into our reader firmware. Currently, all our partners and customers, as you guys know, are using our SDKs that I just walked through to build applications. Sometimes that could be a little too much of a lift for partners and application developers to know and learn the SDK, learn about our tool chain, build an application, and then maintain it for the long run. What we are offering here is a built-in native functionality with MQTT, HTTP, REST APIs, where there is no need of learning our tool chain. It's about configuring your reader to point your data to an endpoint and the endpoint just collects the data and the partner can add their own value add and data and can do their own processing on top of that data once that data is reaches their endpoint. So we make that data extraction very simple and easy and we can do that without any writing of code it's all about configuration configuring the reader to point the data to whatever endpoint of your choice it's a real-time automated data collection tool it's real time because it it's reading tags and it's sending it over through these modern protocols it's off the shelf and as i said it's really no coding required it's you know you're not writing any application to do this translation anymore or no middleware required so you are just configuring and getting data you can you can configure the data to push the uh, configure the reader to push data to either a cloud endpoint or a data lake or even an on-prem server that you have within your four walls this is again a standard interface across all RFID readers so this is the this is the key for IoT Connector. As you know, our, we have different products that we offer in our portfolio, as I showed you in the portfolio slide. They all work very differently today. And app customers and partners have to manage different applications for these different products they buy. So in a mixed deployment scenario, 
where you have different kinds of products deployed, that that becomes really tough and and a lot of maintenance to 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 support those different applications. With IoT Connector, we are trying to standardize that interface across all of our readers and all of our products, beginning with the passive RFID readers, such as the FX9600 and 7500. And we have plans to extend that across other products within our portfolio, such as the active BLE readers, receivers, as well as our handhelds products. As I mentioned, this is a, a built-in native feature inside the firmware and we are making this free of charge and no licensing involved. So what can you do with IoT Connector? You can manage control the readers and get events. You can get tag data events as they are read by the antennas and by the reader. You can get real time alerts in terms of the periodic heartbeat events telling you how the reader is doing. Device health. And all the data has a time and date stamp in it and also can provide some location information such as the antenna name where it, the tag data was read. This is a quick glimpse of how this really works. You have an FX9600 running IoT connector inside it. It's reading tag data over APC Gen 2 standard protocol, but from here, out, it's talking either MQTT or HTTP to your IoT dashboard that you have on the cloud or could be even on an on-prem server. As long as your application can talk the the MQTT or the or the HTTP, you can make use of the IoT connector capability. So as you can see here, it's a very simple model. There is no middleware involved, no SDK involved. You have your application and you're just configuring the IoT connected to send data to your endpoint. Once the data receives gets 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 here, then you can do all your track and trace reports, alerts, trend analysis, all the all the things that you want to do for your value add offer. Hope this is a good overview of IoT connector for RFID. Again, we have a session specifically on this topic that will get into more details of how to use IoT Connector and how that benefits you from building applications, building integrations with our FX9600. With that, that ends my presentation. I'll take some questions if there's any. Thank you very much, Ankan. Yep, we have uh, quite a few questions actually, so we'll try our best to get through these fairly quickly. Just mm -hmm. before I jump into the questions, uh, the page that Ankan was trying to show with the, the videos where the sound wasn't quite working, I've put the link to that uh, web page into the chat. So if you open up the chat tab and click that link, you'll be able to see the videos that he was uh, trying to demo. So apologies for the technical issues there, but uh, it's just one of those things with online webinars. So let's get straight into the questions. So a question here from David for you, Ankan. Uh, for the Android SDKs, are there any plans to support Marvin or J Center to download them, similar to how the EMDK is available? We have not looked into that, but we can certainly look into and see, you know, how many customers and partners really using that model. So yes, EMDK is 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 a product within Zebra. It's by a different organization within Zebra, and we work with them closely enough. So we will work with the with with that organization to find out more about it, and we'll get back to you. Okay, sounds good, Ankan. Thank you. So from Mark now, uh, I use Row Mobile Tools from TAU, tauplatform.com. I suppose TAU is a Zebra partner. Does TAU Platform support all these Zebra devices? I have not worked with them directly, so it would be something that uh, we need to find out, uh, see if they do support all our products. I have not personally worked with them, and I, I don't know any current opportunities we're working with. Uh, where we are working with that partner. So I have to find out what, what they really officially support. At this point, I don't have an answer on that. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, so a question here from Joaquin. Uh, in which cases uh, could I use the RFID reader embedded SDK? So I guess he's looking for some use cases for that sure. embedded SDK. Yeah, so RFID embedded SDK would be something that you want to use to do some local data processing before you send data to the cloud maybe. Um, sometimes you have a need where you want to reduce latency from the back and forth communication with the cloud and you want to do all that natively inside the reader, such as turning on a GPIO or you want to, you know, you know, you want to filter out some tags before you send it over to the cloud. So there is there is a need uh, on some local processing uh, activities that you want to do on the reader. And that's where the embedded SDK really becomes helpful. Right on, sir. thank you. So a question here from Bill, is there a minimum firmware version that is needed for the latest 123 RFID? There is uh, not a minimum firmware version as such, but of course we always push our customers and partners to use the latest uh, versions of both so that they can uh, take advantage of the latest features and benefits that our tool offers. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so another question here from Joaquin. Uh, IoT connector, sorry, let me say that again. Is there a license cost for IoT connector or is it free to use? IoT connector for RFID will be free to use once we launch end of this month and early next month. That's great, thank you. Uh, so if a network connection is dropped, will RFID reads be buffered? Yes, so in IoT Connector, we have capabilities to retain tag reads, and that could be configured for how many reads or how long you want to buffer it before the network connection gets established and that they can send that over. Okay, great. So a uh, question here from Haresh. Uh, when you say all readers, does that mean it will work with the RFID 40 and RFID, RFD 90 devices? Um, I, I guess the question is around IoT connector. Is that the question? I, I believe so. It came in towards the end of okay. your presentation. Yeah, so IoT, yeah, so IoT connector, we are launching uh, for FX9600 and FX7500 for now. The plan later on is to bring in other devices as well. So from the RFD40, RFD90 specifically, we're looking into turning IoT connector on for the, the built-in Wi-Fi that's available on the premium, premium plus model. So you could remotely manage and download firmware and get battery health data from these devices over the air to your management entity, a monitoring entity you have on the other side using IoT connector protocols. But that is in future plan. That's not currently today committed or uh, we have planned to release nowhere anytime in the future, anytime today. That's going to be sometime next year. We don't have a definitive date yet. Understood. That's why it's good to attend these events because you learn of future, well, tentative future plans. Mm -hmm. So a question from Justin, uh, will you be able to configure GPIO events from IoT Connector? Yes, you will be. That's, you can use two ways of doing that. You can go to the reader web console in the, within the IoT connector page, you can configure the GPIO that way. And we also offer APIs to configure GPIO through IoT connector. Right. Uh, can you manage data filtering at the reader level with IoT connector? Yes, that is the whole point of IoT connector. It offers some basic reader filtering at the radio level that you could configure through IoT connectors, again, through the web UI or for, through APIs. Great. Okay, so this next question, uh, bear with me here. Uh, so once a device is configured as IoT connector on HTTP, can I get the device ID, so the MAC, the IP, or the serial number when I have multiple devices? So th that's not going to be available in the first version, but that's a plan that we're looking into offering in the, in the future version of IoT connector. Okay, thank you. Uh, when can we expect the firmware that includes IoT Connector to be available for partners? Yeah, we're targeting end of this month. 
and a launch I think is is targeted sometime middle of next month. Okay. Uh, do we have any plans for a host SDK for Python? We we do not. So the I in the IoT connector model, we we one of the capabilities is to offer Python libraries that someone could use to build apps to run on the reader using IoT connector. So yes, we will have some Python libraries, but that's only to develop apps to run on the reader, not not on the app the host side. Okay. Uh, so I think this is the same question. What is the planned release date for MQTT support? So I'm guessing end of this month. Correct. Okay. Uh, is there a plan to upgrade the .NET Framework SDK version to .NET Core? Yeah, so so again, we we don't we are looking into that. We don't have a committed timeline yet. We are, you know, as an organization, as our direction is more towards IoT connector right now to get that available free of charge to you guys because that is the the more industry standard way of integration. We're using modern protocols, so IoT connector is really a priority to get that released. .NET Core is not in the priority right now. But again, in the future, if we get a lot of demand and customer needs that we find, then we will definitely revisit that. But at the moment, we don't have plans for it. Okay, sounds very reasonable. Uh, can the embedded uh, version create a GUI, a GUI in the reader page? <sighs> embedded version, so the GUI today, so again, we do offer SDKs today, so there's, two ways you can do an embedded application development using IoT connector, which is through the Python or Node.js way. And you would learn more in the in the session later. And the other is the, the current embedded SDK way, which is really LLRP and RM. Those embedded SDKs are just made available to you so you can build an app. There is really no UI related to that because we don't have a, a you know, the only UI that that's available today is the is the web server that's built in in the reader that exposes a GUI interface, but the embedded apps doesn't have a UI. Okay, great. Uh, so, do we have any plans to convert the Android SDK uh, in future to a Kotlin version so that we can use features such as uh, coroutine instead of async tasks? Yeah, we, we again. That's also something we are we are investigating. There are some things we can do uh, on the SDK side to make it Kotlin compatible. That's what we are currently looking at. Again, there is no committed timeline today. Okay, I still got quite a few questions here, so I appreciate mm -hmm. your uh, your patience here, and it's great that everyone's so uh, involved with the session. So, uh, when will .NET Maui support be available? Yeah, so this is again, we our direction is more towards from the from the fixed reader side, we you know the host SDKs, we 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 don't have a plan today, but on the on the Android uh and the Xamarin on the handheld side of SDKs, we're looking at what needs to be done to make that compliant with .NET uh Maui. Again, stay tuned. We don't have a we don't have a plan on that yet. Uh, so I think this next one might be a bit more feedback than a question, uh, but are there any plans to add proper comments and descriptions to the API documentation page? So the way that that works is, you know, um, we, we have a version of the documentation out today. If you guys have any comments or feedback, I would say developer zebra.com the, the portal would be the place to put your comments and feedback and we'll considering it we'll consider it as we go yeah i would echo those uh, comments yeah if you provide the feedback on our developer portal or alternatively developer at zebra.com via email uh, that feedback will be very useful for us there's also a survey actually on tech docs at the moment uh, it pops up fairly randomly at the moment uh, but if you are on there uh, frequently, you will get that survey to leave some feedback as well. So uh, we're pretty much out of time here. So um, we're due for a five minute or so break. Uh, Ankan, are you okay to hang on for five minutes or so more? And we can work through the break to get through some of these questions. Does that sound good to you? Sure. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. So uh, what's the version that includes the IoT connector license? So again, IoT connector would not have a license associated with it. It would be available via a former update that we would post on our support page under the FX9600 at the end of this month. Great. Uh, can you use IoT Connector to push a command back from our platform to the 7500, for example, to stop reading? Yes. So these APIs are available as REST API calls. So that would that you guys can um, issue it uh, as a local um, as a local REST command from your local instance within the within the within the firewall within the same network, right? So you cannot issue the start stop from outside the the network because that would be a security security hole. Okay, great. Uh, so, doo -doo -doo. does this mean that we cannot retain a tag read after reconnect in one two three RFID? One two three RFID is really a demo on the on the host side, or or do that on the app side running on uh, as an embedded SDK using the embedded SDK on the reader. Great, thank you. Uh, so how will it be connected to the FX9600? Does it have an interface? You mean uh, IoT connector? I believe so, yeah, it just came Yeah, I, I, so IoT connector is, again, is running on the reader. So if you, if you have an application that's gonna use IoT connector APIs, Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we're going to have to leave it there. I know there's quite a lot of unanswered questions, so I apologize for that. If your question fits another session, please feel free to re-ask it and we'll try and get round to it more promptly next time. Otherwise, uh, feel free to reach out at developer at zebra.com or on our developer portal, developer.zebra.com.